What's the most f***ed up thing you did in a sleepover? Story 1. I was at a sleepover at my best friend's house in 7th grade. Her brother was two years older and really cute. All evening, he asked if I'd come out with him after everybody was asleep. I said no, but of course, late that night, I felt him tugging on my foot. My friend and I were in her queen bed and he was at the end whispering at me to please, please come talk to him. For some reason, I found the whole thing hilarious and was trying to laugh quietly. Dude pulls his shorts down and shows me this massive boner. While impressive, it just set me off laughing harder. Finally, his sister rises straight up like the kid in The Exorcist and screams, Michael, stop trying to get her to look at your boyfriend. We exchanged a meaningful look as we heard his mother yell. While impressive, it just set me off laughing harder. God, Michael. And fling her door open. It was too soon for us. I had seen my first adult penis and I needed time to process it. We did go out when I was in 9th or 10th grade, but I never saw that beast again. Story 2. I had a girl tell me that she knew someone who masturbated by holding themselves up at the top of a door and basically doing pull-ups against the door to get off. She even demonstrated it for me. Then she took a very long shower with a detachable shower head. She came out silent and was out of it for a bit. It didn't occur to me until a few years later that she had the most defined arms of anyone I knew at the time who was our age. I remember thinking that was weird since she played soccer but her upper body was ripped. Also, no one would make that up and say it was their friend because it was so strange and she was way too good at it. I tried after she said, sweet, a new way to get off but I could only raise my body a few times. Anyway, the girl escaped from the corner of her closet door by performing pull-ups. Story 3 One of my favorite stories, to tell my friends, middle school birthday sleepover with a bunch of buddies, one buddy got our birthday buddy Elisa and Fleshlight, which we were all super excited about because we had seen them online but never in person or tried them. This is where it gets weird. Another buddy pulls out a bunch of condoms and proposes that we try them one at a time. So birthday buddy starts it off, maybe without a wrap if I remember, I go in and use it next, and Lisa as silicone delight is passed down the line. There are about six people in the bathroom, another buddy enters and hides in the shower connected, while our buddy Austin enters to use it. He hears Austin talking to it, saying like you're going to be mine tonight, oh yeah, I've waited so long for this, and then the sound of licking as he proceeds to eat out the sorely used rubber pussy. At that point, buddy jumps out, and we all hear yelling and commotion, after which they both flee. Austin with his pants down. Needless to say, that story stuck with him for a while. Story 4. I was at a friend's place in high school and was going to stay the night. Well, his other buddy, who rides horses with him in for H, was over the previous night, and he had shown him how to use the P2P program to get movies or music. The computer was in a den office that had a bed in it. The bed was where his buddy had slept the night before, and it was where I was going to sleep. When my friend opened the computer's P2P program to show me how it works, it still had several videos queued to download. They were all bestiality videos of guys having sex with horses. I jokingly told my friend that his horse buddy from For H wanted to have his horse. My friend said, oh my god, my horse is boarded at his barn. I said, don't you have that black light? We proceeded to use the black light on all the furniture we were sitting on and it was covered in semen. I then said, all the evidence is here, your friend wants to F you and your horse. He literally jacked off in the middle of the night watching these videos and fantasizing about your horse and you in the bedroom next door. It shocked my friend out so badly that he went straight to his buddy's barn at 7 p.m., pulled his horse out, loaded it in a trailer, and hauled it 40 miles to a family farm to board it there at about 9 p.m. When he was loading the horse, his buddy came out and asked what was going on, and my friend started screaming, You're not going to F my horse, you sick mother and they almost got into the most hick fist fight I could ever witness. So, with my buddy gone and his horse in tow, I had the choice of going back to his house and having dinner with his parents in an odd situation while he was missing. Or I could go home. I just decided to go home rather than stay the night in the semen-covered room and try to explain anything to anyone. 
I just let my friend look like a crazy person because he refused to tell his parents why he did that and refused to explain how there was now bestiality porn on the computer. The next day I told him he needed to get the bestiality porn off the computer because it's not legal to have that. He could go to jail for it. He just chose to tear the entire computer apart and leave it in a bunch of pieces in the den. That then paid off his dad. And so his dad tried to withhold the money that his ex-wife had sent as child support. That then caused a problem because my friend said if you dad told his mom and she told the court, which then caused an issue between them because the dad was violating the court order by giving that money to the son. And it basically caused him to fall out with his biological parents. Story 5. I was about 10 years old at the time and I spent the night at a friend's house where we watched the moon. Not the original either. It was a remake. I recall seeing the lady in the bathtub scene walking at me as if she was getting out of the tub, long story short. It scared me so bad that I couldn't sleep that night. So, I decided to walk downstairs and tell my friend's parents that I was having trouble sleeping, which was embarrassing enough. But I opened the door to their room only to find my friend's dad completely sprawled out naked on the bed with his legs wide open while watching TV. I tried to close the door, but it was too late. And I had to pretend I didn't just see his member and tell him I was simply too terrified to sleep. My buddies still bring it up to this day. Story 6 I was around 10 at the time at a 4th of July cookout at my uncle's house. Everyone's having a good time fireworks, grilling, all the good 4th of July stuff. So my cousin breaks out a bag of marshmallows for us to start roasting, and obviously nothing capitalizes on a cookout like making s'mores. But no sooner than we get the marshmallows on the sticks do we hear all sorts of sirens going off. So, three of us, ranging in age from 10 to 15, go running through the woods towards his neighbor's house to discover that it is, in fact, on fire. I have no idea how the fire started or really anything that happened in regards to that family or their possessions if the house was saved. I know nothing and can't remember anything, but what I will never forget is what I assumed to have been the mother's or wife's mortified look when she saw three young boys standing next to her burning home holding marshmallows on sticks. Story 7. I was in the fifth grade, probably about 11 or so. I was born in the 1990s, so at the end of my grade school years was when camcorders or video cameras were first starting to become a thing. Not the big, blocky ones, but personal-sized ones you could hold in your hand and save video to an SD card. This is before smartphones. Anyways, I had gotten one the day of my birthday and had a sleepover that night. We had way too much Mountain Dew and a little 11-year-old birthday party high, so we started making random funny videos. One thing led to another and eventually I got peer pressured into making a video of my junk. Not anything provocative, just a video of me swinging it around or whatever. We started laughing so hard that the inevitable happened and I peed. All over one of the sleeping bags and worse, my buddy who was in it. He returned home and had to explain to his mother why he smelled like piss and didn't want to spend the night and I had to find out how to delete a video from an SD card on our family computer. Story 8. I went to dinner with my friend and his parents. After being challenged to finish my whole meal, which was a large portion for a 6th grader, we headed back to my friend's house. We went downstairs right away to watch the basketball game, but my stomach couldn't handle that large meal and my organs. I went to take a poop, but before I could close the door, I heard from my friend's stepdad, if you clog the toilet, you have to go home, looking back. I now see it as him just giving me a hard time. Anyway, I proceeded to go to the bathroom. I had finished up and was ready for a relaxing night, but of course, I clogged the toilet on accident. And scared to ask, the cold water mixed with the warm poop will live with me forever. I squished and squished and ripped and tore through it all until it finally gave. Story 9 In high school, circa 2004, my two friends and I stole, borrowed, one of our friends' SUVs to go to the dried-up river in the desert to party and drink, which we did. I got drunk and went to return it before the next morning when the engine blew. We weren't even dogging it, we just used it for transportation. Middle of the desert 
We had to call more friends to bring out a four-wheeler, and we towed this mofo with a quad back to his grandmother's house in the middle of the night. No lights for miles on a paved road. I killed the quad a quarter mile before arriving at the house and pushed it the rest of the way back into the driveway without saying anything and without getting caught. Story 10 My childhood best friend had two younger sisters, whose ages were each two years apart. So we were 11 years old, my middle sister was 9, and my youngest sister was 7. We snuck into my youngest sister's room, who was a notoriously heavy sleeper and loosely tied a string around her wrist, then tied the other end to the ceiling fan. Turned the fan on low, so her arm was slowly helicoptering in circles while she slept. When his mother came around to check on all of us kids a few minutes later, she burst out laughing. She told us to make sure we took it back down before too long, and we assured her we planned to. She went back to bed and must have told her husband, who most certainly did not find the humor in it. We both got grounded for months. Story 11 I was probably 10 or so and at a friend's house with a few kids for a birthday party and sleepover. We were going to eat some burgers, then eat cake and play NES games. We all ate burgers and chips in the living room while watching a movie and were having a good time. I went into the kitchen to get some more soda and when I opened the fridge I saw that it wasn't cake but cupcakes. I have no idea what came over me but I grabbed the tray of cupcakes, opened it, and just stood there eating them. I had to have eaten like 20 of them, I swear. Realizing what I had done and also realizing that they were probably wondering where I was, I took the empty tray and just left with it. I got on my bike and went home. As soon as I got home, I threw up, probably because I'd just eaten like 10,000 calories of chocolate and pure sugar. My mom asked me why I was home and I just said I didn't feel good. My friend never mentioned it and we didn't speak of it for the remaining 10 plus years we stayed in contact. I have since resolved too that if I ever see him again the first thing I'm going to say is Jake I eat the cupcakes.